Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 14th, 2023 edition of the Sandnet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Well, first of all, a thank you to everybody who attended my keynote here at Science Fire earlier this week, either online or here in person. Talked a little bit about the Internet Storm Center and such. We do have a great sort of follow-up diary to this from Jesse today, where he talks a little bit about the honeypot and how to manage some of the logs that it retains and how to basically get more value out of this little Raspberry Pi or virtual machine honeypot. So check it out if you are already or if you're planning to run our honeypot. And there was a lot of news, also some confusion about a Chinese APT actor apparently gaining access to the Outlook 365 accounts of a number of different US federal agencies. The problem in this case was not a vulnerability per se as stated by a blog post from Microsoft as well as a blog post from the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency CISA. This particular threat actor apparently got a hold of a signing key used by Microsoft. How did he got a hold of it? That's really the big, big question here, whether it was leaked, stolen, uh, purchased or uh, how they got to it but uh, this signing key then allowed them to essentially authenticate as arbitrary users they used this access uh, to access various sensitive email accounts and then exfiltrated emails this was discovered about a month ago however apparently was going on for quite a while this is one of those uh, tricky events uh, to figure out and really detect uh, because you do have someone using what looks like valid credentials. Apparently, uh, these respective agencies uh, did note the odd app ID being used in order to access uh, these email accounts. Microsoft mitigated this problem by now by invalidating this signing key that was used here. So this is not a vulnerability per se, nothing that you need or can do really to prevent this, really up to Microsoft to keep its keys better locked down. And I'll link to the CISA blog post about this particular event. It includes a number of items that uh, you may be able to implement in order to detect activity like this. And thanks to Uptakes for posting a thorough analysis of a recent fake proof of concept exploit that was posted to a GitHub. This proof of concept exploit used apparently and there was also copied into a number of different real exploits that were essentially amended by adding this backdoor to the particular proof of concept code. Just compiling or running the code may exfiltrate data from your system, modify authorized keys file on your system, and also add persistent malware that will continue to run on the researcher system who inadvertently, again, compiled or executed the proof of concept exploit. The particular malicious repository has since been removed from a GitHub. However, apparently a number of other GitHub users have forked, have copied this particular repository, so the exploit code may still be out there. If you do suspect that you may have executed uh, this particular malware, take a look at the blog post written by Optix. It has uh, plenty of details about what is going on with the backdoor here, what it exactly will exfiltrate and what kind of access it provides, also some good indicators of compromise. And then we have a proof of concept exploit, an actual real proof of concept exploit for a recent ghost script vulnerability, CVE 2023-36664. Ghost script is the PDF a postscript creation library included in a lot of Linux tools. This particular exploit that was developed by Crawl uh, does actually target LibreOffice, the open source office suite often included in Linux. 
I think this is overall a good reminder uh, to keep an eye out for ghost script vulnerabilities. Uh, we had uh, plenty of them in the past. They are also often exploitable, not just if you're using Office software like LibreOffice, but also if a ghost script is used as part of any PDF uh, postscript uh, creation processes on servers or file conversion processes. In these cases, it may not always be that super easy to figure out if you're using ghost script or not so just keep it patched well and that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again on monday bye